Hey, welcome to uh, session three, Onward and Upward from my self-portrait professional and personal development course. So I hope you've enjoyed um, uh, discovering more about yourself in session one and session two. Now we want to move a little bit more about the way we're speaking, the things that we're saying and making sure that we're not blaming others for where we are and that we're not saying things like, you know, if my mom had been this or my father had been this, you know, and thinking that that, you know, that we might be a better product if someone else's behavior might have been different. And we don't really have proof of that. So in session three, I talk about, I start talking about how we are waiting on other people to make us feel better. Look at your, on page uh, 26 in the second paragraph. Let me read this to you. Most of the time we are waiting for others to change so we can feel better about ourselves. As a therapist, a lot of times when clients come to my office, they come and they tell me about all what this other person is doing, what their supervisor is doing. They tell me about all these different things that's going on. And they're really saying, hey, I don't need to change. They need to change. And if they change, my life would be better. And, I, you know, you would assume that if a person is coming to your office for help, that they're coming for themselves because no one else is in the room but themselves. So I want to submit to you, make sure that you're not waiting on someone else's behavior to be different so that you can be better. So onward and upward is something about you looking at yourself, you making a choice and a decision that I'm going to be different in my space. I'm going to speak differently. I'm going to present myself differently and I'm going to work on my own internal agitations. The third verse, excuse me, third paragraph says, we are in charge of our destiny. We have to frame our world with God's word because our life follow our words. Our life follows our words. So the things that I'm saying, the things that I'm uh, speaking, my life is following it. If I'm saying I'm never going to get married, I'm saying don't nobody want me. If I'm saying um, I'm never going to you know, be blessed, I'm never going to have this, I'm never going to have that. I can't, soon I get some money, my money gets out my hands. As long as you keep saying that, you are drawing those negativity, those negative things towards you. You have to frame your life by what God has said about you. So I want to say this to you, the uh, fourth paragraph. The Lord spoke to me and said, ask the question, what is driving you? That's my question. What is driving you? Because God leads. God presents. He gives instruction. But if you're feeling like somebody is driving you and pushing you, that's not God. If you're feeling like, oh, I got to make a million. I got to make a million because, you know, uh, you know, I put that out there. Or, I, I mean, I, I got to be successful in this. My marriage got to look great. My children got to look great. Because I don't want people to know that I'm a mess, that I don't really have it together. You have to figure out what is driving me to want to be successful. What is driving me to want to have a lot of money? You have to ask ask. Answer those questions for yourself. Only these, this course is for you. It's not for someone else. It's for you to make a choice and make a decision on how do I want to be? How do I want to act? How do I want to operate? How do I want to be presented? When people see me, how do I want that uh, uh, people to, uh, how do I want people to see me? So over, um, I asked you all that question at the end of the, the last page, I think, in your session three on page 32. I'm going to ask you that question, those questions in just a moment. But before I do, I want to just kind of go through the things that you've already gone through and just kind of like uh, add a little bit to what you probably have already been, you know, got insight on. I like on page 27... I asked that question, 
And when I ask the question, I say, I say it again, what is driving you to do what you do? And then I begin to write out the scripture about why was Peter following Christ? I give you a scripture. Why was he really with Jesus? You have to ask yourself, why am I really with this person? Why am I, you know, around this friend? Am I trying to be, you know, I'm, I'm connected to them so they can make me successful? Am I doing these certain things? Like you got to ask your own self the tough questions. Ask your own self what is your motive in what you're doing? So I like what I said. I want to be a leader of a revolution. That's how Peter was. He was like, he was always trying to conquer something. He was always ready to fight. And there were days that he was down. There were days that he didn't feel so good about himself. And uh, he, he didn't like it that he betrayed Jesus. No, well, he didn't betray Jesus. He denied him. And in denying, you, denying him, you're still saying, I wasn't with him. So it's kind of like a betrayal. I know we just give Judas that position, but those that know the word, you know, know in the Bible, I'm talking about in the Bible, there was a man by the name of Judas that they, um, most of us blame for Jesus's death, but that wasn't the reason why Jesus did not, uh, that Jesus had to go to the cross. But nevertheless, what was driving Judas to do what he was doing is for stealing money out of the treasury. What was driving Peter to hang with Jesus? Was he hanging with Jesus because Jesus, you know, he was the miracle worker. You know, um, was he hanging with Jesus because, you know, I know my needs going to be met, which is nothing wrong with that. But when it's time to go through your own um, personal reason why you hang in with a person, why you got married, why you are not married, if you want to be married, because you don't have to be married. But if that's a desire, you have to ask yourself, what is going on with me? Let me check myself. Not that I want to make myself better for someone else. I want to make myself better for me and God. And they get the overflow of me doing that. So I asked you the question, or I say the question, I want what I want when I want it. She is full of lustful passion. This was Potiphar's wife. And for those who don't know, I use this from, this is a faith-based teaching. But I love the stories in the Bible. I love them because, man, it is so us. It break it down. It let us know that, hey, something was going on with Potiphar's wife. She had a husband. I don't know whether or not he didn't, you know, he wasn't able to please her sexually. I don't know what was going on with Potiphar's. But his wife wanted the slave uh, or, or the, their worker, Joseph. At that time, he was a slave. And he, she was just lustful after him. She wanted him. She desired him. She went after him. She did everything she could to get him. But his integrity said, I cannot do this. I cannot lay with my uh, Lord's uh, wife, my um, supervisor wife, my boss wife. I just can't do it. I'm too, I have too much integrity to do it. And I love God. And I, and I have a different standard. So a lot of times we want people to live by our standards. Let me say that again. We say things like, man, I can't believe they did that. I can't believe they acted like that. I can't believe this. The, I can believe it because they don't have a moral standard for themselves. You have to have your own moral standards. You have to make a choice on how you want to be in the world. You have to make a choice even if they act a certain way, I'm not going to act that way. Even if they're fuming and cussing and, you know, I'm not going to respond back to them in the way they responded back, to, responds to me. I'm going to respond in a professional way, in a respectful way, in a way that I would desire to be spoken to, even if I'm not being spoken to that way. You have to choose that. In this session of learning onward and upward, you get to see these different characters. You get to see how they are. You get to see how they present themselves and that they these are real life situations that they walk through some of them some of them come out in a victorious way and some of them uh, do not because everything doesn't come out in a victorious way so let's look over at the 28th chapter excuse me 28th uh, page I like when I ask the question I want to please God this is what Joseph said is this your desire is my question to you what are some of some other desires you have toward God? What is it? Like, I wanted to be closer to him. I wanted to know him more. I wanted to understand him more. Things like that. That's what I want. 
And then I asked, posed the question about, hey, I want to be a millionaire. And that's where we get to Judas Iscariot. Because he was always taking money from the treasury. You know, Jesus knew he was stealing, but Jesus didn't address it. He'll just say, Judas, you know, Satan trying to get you, Judas. And, you know, Judas would be like, oh, he don't know I'm stealing. Uh, you know, so Judas had opportunity to make a uh, moral correction. There are many times that you will have opportunity to do what is right. And it's going to be left up to you whether or not you do what's right. It's not going to be left up to the other person. It's not that they're doing wrong. Well, I don't want them to think that I'm a punk or that I don't want them to think that, you know, I'm afraid of them because I don't come back in a violent way or in a way that I'm going to show you who I am. If you keep bothering me, I'm going to show you what I got. No, we don't have to come back in that way. There are, you will have times and many opportunities to make the right decisions. You'll have the times to course correct some things. You'll have the opportunity to say, you know what? Go back and say, I'm sorry for that. I shouldn't have done that that way. That's how you grow. That's how you begin to formulate the way you want your life to be. By saying those things that God would say. Saying those things that are um, faith-based. Those things that are good and lovely and just and pure. When you say things like that, when you do things like that, you're going to see that you're going to feel better. And, you know, first your flesh, your, 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 your person is going to be like, oh, you're a punk, you're a wuss. Why in the world you let them talk to you that way? And I'm not talking about in a marital relationship when they're cussing you out or saying things like that. I'm talking about when that, that person's not worth the fight. You go like, um, I'm not going to get in an argument with you. These, these are my standards. These are my morals. And this is what I stand on. And it's up to you on what you stand on. Uh, I respect you for whatever your stance is. And you're going to respect me for what my stance is. And I request that you, uh, maybe you want, but I request that you be respectful to me. That's what I would say to the other person. That's trying to, I would say, get on my nerves or trying to hurt me or jealous of me in some type of way and trying to bring me down on their level. I have to choose to walk in the uh, virtues. I have to think of those things that are lovely. Those things that are just. You have to do the same thing. Look when I ask the question, mothers sure do love their sons. I began to talk about a story about how this mother came to Jesus and says, hey, you know, my sons is, you know, have been, they have an inheritance from their natural father. And I want to know if they're working for you now and no longer working for my husband and their father and, you know, working in the family business and they're now working in the ministry. I want to know what are you going to be providing them? Can they sit on your right hand and your left hand when you come into your kingdom? And that's when Jesus told her, hey, ma'am, sorry, that is not up to me. I don't get to make that decision. That's above my pay grade. That is my father, God, who will be making that decision. And so you have to ask, your questions, uh, ask yourself the question, can I sustain myself in the places that I desire to go? Because we've heard many times that your gifts can take you to places where your character, your morals can't keep you. What do you mean by that? It means that you can be a great piano player or a great singer, but you on crack cocaine or you on some type of drugs or you have an alcohol problem that eventually is going to get in the way of your gifts. Because if you are an alcoholic, then there's going to be times that you black out. There's going to be certain times that you uh, are depressed or sometimes. So it's going to get in the way of the giftings that you want to present to a person. So like if you got a great job and you got drunk the night before and you have a hangover the next day. So that's going to get in the way. So you have to ask yourself, how do I want to be presented to the world? So I'm going to skip to the last page because I know you all have already gone through all of this. But I want to ask the question that's on the last page, on page 32 in this session. I'm going to ask, let me go all the way to the, the first part and ask you all, 
What are some things you need to clear the clutter and get rid of in your mind, soul, and spirit? Like, what would that, what, 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 let me explain, but what would that look like? That's like, I would have continuously not negative thoughts like, people don't like me years ago. And then I start saying, people love me. People love to be around me. I just changed my way of thinking. Um, even if I see they don't, I say, but there are some people that's going to love me. There are some people who want to be around me. There's going to be some people that's drawn to me. I start speaking those things. So I got those negative cl 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 clutter out of my mind, out of my spirit, out of my soul. Oh, I nobody is never, ever going to want me because I have these many children. No one is going to ever want me because I've been through these many divorces. Oh, I've been through one divorce. Well, I've been through, through this. Whatever your story is, you have to change that story and say, no matter what I've been through, someone is going to want to be with me. No matter uh, uh, what is happening has happened in my life, that's not going to dictate to who I'm going to become because I am becoming the express image of who God made me to be. So what are some things you would like to get rid of in your house, car, closet, and storage? At the time of this taping, I am going through a decluttering in my house as we speak. Like every room needs something to be removed. In my mind, I would think like, oh, I'm going to need this, I'm going to need that. Now I can see I don't need all those things. I can let those things go. I can bless somebody else with those things. And sometimes when you harbor things, it also means, it can mean, that you have a poverty mentality that you're never going to get again or what if it you know if i give it away what if i need it that's a poverty mentality thinking that i would never gain additional things in my life so let me end with these last questions do you think you are approachable ask a friend ask your husband ask a ex-boyfriend ask a ex-co-worker so I really, you know, call them on the phone. So I, I, want to, I really want to know the truth. I just want to know, you know, am I approachable? You know, do I give off a air about myself? Like, don't come, don't come close to me. I just want to know. Let me, you know, ask them. Ask someone. Ask yourself. Do you think that you are not approachable? What do other people say about you personally? What do they say about your personality? They say, oh, you got a great personality, you know. Ask somebody. Ask yourself. Do other people say what they say about my personality? What type of personality do you think you have? Do you think you have an outgoing personality? I'm loving. I'm kind. I mean, like, what, whatever it is. I'm dry. I'm drag. I'm monotone, monotone kind of like person. I'm, you know, like I'm even keel. Whatever it is. Write that out and make sure you're using your companion journal to write these things out because you don't really have the space all the space in the book. Of course, you can use the back of pages and things like that and write all over. I suggest that you write all over your book because you can always reprint out new pages. Another question. What type of expression do you have on your face during the day? Do you think that you're walking around smiling or you think you're walking around with a frown? How do you think you are presented? Sometimes just look at yourself in the mirror really quick and then you can see, oh, that's not a good look. Uh, do people have to go out of their way to make you feel comfortable? Do people have to go out of their way to make you feel comfortable? How do you want people to view you? How do you want people to view you? Whether they do it or not, how do you want people to view you? What are you doing to become that person you want others to see? You can say, I'm going through my self-portrait professional and personal development courses so that I can become the great person that I desire to be. So as you continue on, please go back and look back through the questions. Make sure you read the scriptures in full and meditate on it. You're not in anyone's hurry. Take your time to do a self-discovery of who you are and where you are in this time and space. Okay, see you next session.